Year 2, Week of Easter 3, Sunday. Pondering the Implied Answers Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin? Proverbs 20, verse 9 Dearly beloved, the Holy Ghost, through the man named Solomon, asks the question, Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin? The implied answer most certainly is, no one. No one born of the union of a man and a woman is able to say that he or she has cleansed his own heart or that she is pure from her sin. The scriptures bear witness that this is the correct answer. The Holy Spirit, through the man named Solomon, answered it when he wrote, For there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and does not sin. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20 Jesus, the sinless Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of Mary, came down from heaven to present and be the sacrifice that all people needed. One day he had been invited to eat at the house of a Pharisee. Jesus did so, but he did not wash his hands before eating. When the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. And the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are full of extortion and wickedness. Unthinking ones, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But rather give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean to you. Luke 11 verses 38 through 41. Did not he who made the outside not also make the inside? This world in which we live is one of disease and death. If the outside needs cleaning, and we clean it, ought not also the inside be clean? Put another way, if the body needs to be cleansed, doesn't the soul need that as well? You Pharisees apply the water of this world to your bodies and you leave your wicked, dirty souls unclean and unwashed in the living water that pours forth from heaven through the conduit of the cross and into the baptismal font. As a result, the Pharisees, although spiffed up and sparkling on the outside, remained unclean and profane within because of unbelief. Unthinking ones, think about it. Ponder the implied answer to the questions that Jesus asks. Picture two little infant girls just born into this world. Oh, what joyous births! What wonderful birthdays for their mothers, fathers, grandparents, and families! What happens to these newborn girls? They are quickly cleaned up and cared for. If left to themselves, they would perish. What is true for the body is also true for these little souls. The birth of and into this world is a birth unto death. The newborns need to be born again. Babies born into the families of man need to be welcomed into the household of God, that is to say, the one holy Christian church. These new parents, who call their little girls their heirs, will certainly want them to be sons of God and heirs of heaven. How is this done? The Christ came into this world as a newborn infant to redeem newborn infants. The Father sent his Son into death to atone for the sins of all and for the inherited sinfulness of all, babies included. Jesus fulfilled the law in the place of all and rose again from the dead for all, babies included. O oh, dearly beloved, rejoice, for the promise is to you and to your children, and to all who are afar off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. Acts 2 verse 39. How are these blessings brought to these little girls? Through the word of the gospel, especially baptism. The simple act of baptism has such wonderful power and great blessings because the Almighty Lord God Himself works in it through His word of promise and gives it as His gracious gift. Baptism is not simple water only,
but is the water comprehended in God's command and connected with his word to make disciples of all nations? All nations, all peoples, everyone, including two newborn baby girls, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, all nations, all peoples. According to the will of God and to the abundant blessing of these baby girls, they are brought to the Lord, are crucified with Christ in baptism, are born again unto eternal life through this washing of regeneration of the Holy Spirit. They are children of God and members of the kingdom of God. As the first fruits of their parents, they have been returned unto the Lord. These baby girls are called to remain faithful and be given the crown of life. As they remain faithful and continue to receive God's gifts through word and sacrament, they themselves bear fruits of faith, offerings of time and treasure that support the ministry of the word in and through the church, and acts of mercy for the welfare and benefit of their neighbors. What is true for these baby girls is also true for you. You have been blessed to continue receiving God's gifts and to declare the wonderful deeds of him who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. May it be so for your children, you and me. Prayer O Lord my God, what I could never do, you have done. In your mercy, grace, and love, you have provided an accomplished salvation through the sin-atoning sacrifice of your Son. By your Holy Spirit and his word, given through the means of grace, you have created in me a clean heart. Though I remain sinful by nature, you have declared me pardoned for the transgressions of my youth, pure from my sins of this day, perfect in your hands unto eternity, and yours today and yours always. What wondrous love is this! O Lord, my heart is not lifted up, my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a child quieted at her mother's breast. Like a child that is quieted is my soul. Grant that your church, especially the little ones brought to you in baptism and made heirs of heaven, may hope in you from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Hymn number 325, stanzas 2 and 5. Create my nature pure within, and form my soul averse to sin. Let thy good spirit ne'er depart, nor hide thy presence from my heart. A broken heart, my God, my King, is all the sacrifice I bring. Look down, O Lord, with pitying eye, and save the soul condemned to die. Hymn 